friends, welcome back to my channel. I am Marisa Collison and today we're doing a video with Finn and Runa talking about how we keep our dogs conditioned for hiking up in Southeast Alaska. So if you look at Finn, he is a 10 year old Mastodor. Runa is my five year old Ridgeback. And we get a lot of comments on how well he is in shape and people are very impressed. They never ever, ever think he's um, as old as he is. One of our main tricks is keeping our dogs well conditioned. And in order to do that, that means we need to be on the move all the time. That means that we do at least an hour walk every day. Sometimes we get out a second time for half an hour walk. Um, part of that is to keep them constantly in a state of motion. And the second part is to keep them acclimated to the weather because the temperatures start to drop as well as the weather just gets colder and wetter. Today, Runa has a jacket on um, and we kind of will go on and off with the coat just to kind of get her a little bit used to the cold, but then I know that she's got a really, really thin coat and I have to be realistic of what she can put up with. Once the cold is set in, we'll get out for at least once every two weeks, maybe a good decent hike. And part of that is to keep them in condition so that when we hit springtime and summertime hikes, we're not just sitting stagnant and then expecting them to be in hiking shape. Finn has boots on today and I'm kind of in the process of testing out different boots. One to help her with her feet because um, she tends to get very cold feet when we hike. Second is to help Finn with his feet and the healing process that we've started for him, which I'll talk about in a minute. So in the spring and summer, I said we get a lot more hikes in and they're also much longer duration hikes. So I always bring extra, an extra meal or snacks with them when we do the long hikes. I have to eat a lot more because I'm putting out a lot more energy and they're probably putting out twice as much as me because they're just zigzagging all over the place. So I make sure that I have a lot of food for them. Part of keeping our dogs um, healthy and active is also watching their calorie intake. When we're doing um, just basic daily walks, I will decrease their calories because they're not exerting much energy. We're sitting inside a lot more. And then when in the summertime, when we're putting out a lot more energy, I'll increase the calories. You don't want to pack on a lot of pounds when you're just hanging out. And then all of a sudden expect them to jump into action when it's hiking time. We feed them twice a day. And usually it's at good 12 hours in between. So I feed them at 6 a.m., 6 p.m. It's not a keep full. We watch their food intake. We look at the food that is suggested, the amount, and then we kind of increase or decrease according to that. If I'm out on a walk for treats, I only give them the kibble that they have. They don't get super um, high calorie treats and I don't give them people food. A lot of dogs that I've known just in our small town they tend to get heavier because they're not active, they're fed too much, and they simply tear ACLs just by doing simple things like jumping into a bed of a pickup or they go out for a swim and they've pushed themselves harder than what they're used to and then they come back with injuries that sometimes they can't recover from. This Janu last January, um, we took Finn out and uh, there was all this dead trees all over their place, came back, fine. The next day he started limping on his front right shoulder. I mean, we couldn't pinpoint what the injury was. Um, tend it was up here in his shoulder. We would had him on a nice rest period. A lot of times, no walks, took him out to the bathroom and back. And then once he started to seem like he recovered, take him out for a morning walk. And if he seemed to be limping, then we would just give him a day or two with nothing. It took um, probably a good six months. Even this summer, we took him on a number of hikes, but they were very low impact hikes. And um, probably the hardest one was in October when I took him up Crystal. And that was the first time I took him on a lard, long, hard hike. Lard. 
a long, hard hike, and he's recovering well. I haven't seen him limping since then. He has other issues that we're dealing with with his feet. But that's just something that we keep him in shape, we keep him strong, and that just kind of came up out of nowhere. If you can see the terrain that we hike in, in the woods, there's just fallen trees everywhere, and Finn loves to get up on high stuff and jump down. So he came out of the woods and that's what we had to deal with. But he seems to be a lot better now. In the meantime, we treated him with CBD from Red Raven up in Fairbanks. And then we treated him with Dasaquin supplements to help with joint repair. It seemed like it was more of a joint issue and not so much of a muscle. So with this, two tablets or two little um, chews for the initial um, injury period and then one for maintenance. I still have Finn on two because I still think that he needs that much and Runa gets one. And they really like these, as you can tell, like they see them and they just go gaga. The CBD that we get from Red Raven, they love that too. So this is in a dropper and they just take it like that. Um, I know a friend of ours, she had to put on the dog's food, but these guys just like take it straight from the bottle. So right now Finn has some booties on his feet and it's because he's got, um, the only thing we can think of is some type of, I guess, allergy that we're dealing with that the vet told us anyways we took him to the vet and we were told it was a an allergy and so we put him on some special food haven't seen much of a change so we're taking a different route and we're hitting some probiotics with him um, because it's causing a lot of um, irritation on his foot on the paws of his foot and then he'll get some really intense like a blistery sore on the inside of his toes. And so right now the boots are on his feet, A, to test out the shoes because I wanna invest in shoes. And um, I was lucky enough to get someone to um, let me borrow these to test out. And two, be able to um, protect his feet. Everything's just icy cold. And so there's a lot more like cutting on his foot that's happening. If you have any, any um, ideas to help with the care of his foot, that'd be awesome. In the meantime, um, we're just putting silver colloidal, we're putting colloidal silver on when we can and just giving his feet rest when we can. Cor what? Colloidal. Colloidal. I guess in summary, the best thing you can do to keep your dog's condition for hiking is just to keep them moving. Just like a person, there's a lot less motivation to get up and go hike a mountain if you aren't daily making the effort to stay in shape for it. And that's how I look at it for our dogs. Um, the weather in the Southeast can be very unmotivating and sometimes they don't even want to get outside and be in the weather, but we make an effort to get them out and keep moving. Um, so that they'll be hiking up until they're 10, 12 years old, just like when they're five. If there's anything that you felt that we missed, leave it in the comment below because I would love to make another video and answer questions that you might have that I didn't think of. I've got two other dog videos about our dogs, hiking with them in the wintertime, in the intro video. I've also done a backpack video and the jacket that Runa's wearing. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave comments below. And let me know what else you guys wanna know about Finn and Runa and hiking in Alaska. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.